Ladies and gentlemen, this is indeed a momentous occasion. 16 years ago, I cut every frame of this picture, creating a vision which has truly defined my career. Millions of people have seen that labor of love. It was the greatest movie I ever saw. It was funny. It, it was weird. It's stuck. <laughs> Who plays in this movie? Steve McQueen. Um... McQueen, he wasn't in this movie, was he? I need to see this movie again. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes is surely one of the epic motion pictures of all time. Assuming a rather loose interpretation of the word epic. Like most great artists, the creative forces behind Attack of the Killer Tomatoes waged a bitter battle with Hollywood to preserve their creative vision. Fluke, a flatworm of... That's not it. Fluke, a stroke of luck. Yeah, that's it. Mr. Dillon, USA Today called Attack of the Killer Tomatoes one of the five best movie titles of all time. No, USA Today called it one of the five best movies of all time. No, I believe it was movie title. Are you sure? Quite. Rats. Really? Uh, yes. How did you come up with the title? Hey, wasn't Gone with the Wind on that list too? Yes. Why don't you ask Margaret Mitchell how she came up with the title for her movie? Bet that would be an interesting story. It was the title of her book. Wow, really? Gone with the Wind was a book too? Yee. From its creation, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes caught the imagination and fascination of the public. Capitalizing on the oldest of human fears, no one likes to eat their vegetables, the Killer Tomato story made headlines around the world. In 1990, the crew of the space shuttle Atlantis conducted the Tomato Seeds in Space experiment, accompanied by the world-famous Killer Tomato theme song. Attack of the Killer Tomato. The lyrical strains of my song are now enmeshed in the time-space continuum, carried by radio waves into the very shadow of infinity. <laughs> Now, in the interest of fairness, we present an opposing viewpoint. I understand that the members of your organization feel that the image of tomatoes in this movie is biased. Exactly. We feel that the portrayal of tomatoes in a negative light is demeaning and prejudiced. So you are saying that tomatoes are actually harmless. Of course. And that any portrayal of tomatoes as deadly is a wild exaggeration. We are peaceful and friendly, dude. So, it would not bother you to be called a slimy dirt hugger? No more than calling you a flesh-eating vegivore. Rabbit food. Biped. Weed lover. Ape descendant. Cross pollinator. Forbidden fruit eater. Ah, your mother lives in a salad bar. Ah! Hey, I'm gonna make tomato sauce ah! out of you. Ah! Take this. Like White Christmas and It's a Wonderful Life, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes has become a true holiday classic. Did you know that Gone with the Wind was a book, too? Oh. Here's a killer tomato Christmas party favorite, the always popular Bobbing for Tomatoes. Then it's time to turn on the old TV for another viewing of the world's first interactive movie. At Halloween, it's no secret that plump, ripe tomatoes are a festive and nutritious treat. And the holiday just wouldn't be complete without the traditional tomato lantern. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes is also an Easter favorite with a traditional tomato hunt. For the little ones, we suggest you hide the tomatoes a few days earlier. That'll make them easier to find. Yeah! The traditional pinata is but one example of the international appeal of this modestly budgeted motion picture classic. You know, that is a common misconception about this flick. The budget was actually much larger than the $47.95 figure often bandied about. That's right, John. No one ever remembers the opening scene. A cavalry charge of over 10,000 bazooka-wielding Cossacks launched from an aircraft carrier in the middle of the Dead Sea. Unfortunately, a hair got stuck in the gate and we lost the whole scene. You know, another misconception is that we filmed this without a script. Yeah, I mean, we had a script. It's just that we lost both copies on the first day of shooting. 
Another myth is that the tomatoes were made out of paper mache. Actually, I know a genuine six foot tomato when I see one. And let me tell you, they're great big round red things, sort of like pet rocks, only they're not rocks, kind of like big beach balls, only they're not uh, beach balls. Uh, now might be a like, good time to move on. They got seeds in them, like cucumbers, only they're not cucumbers, because they're long and green. They're more like bananas, because they have a, kind of a thick skin, but they're not like bananas. In 1992, 14 years after the film's release, an exhaustive international search was launched for celluloid treasure. Scenes cut from the original release version. Finally, Eureka! Unfortunately, the lost scenes had been sold as scrap and cut into ticker tape for the annual Earth Day parade. Each piece was laboriously collected cataloged and spliced together by a top-notch team of fastidious experts. After two years of intensive effort, the first clips have been carefully restored at great expense. At long last, the big moment had arrived. You idiots, you restored the wrong movie. And then, quite literally by accident, the real lost footage was found. Thowie! And thus, here it is, fully restored. Uncut, uncensored. Wait a minute. If you cut the original picture, how can this be the director's cut? Sick him, guys. Hey, hey, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is my game. Get, 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 get away from me. Ah! <coughs> As I was saying, enjoy the show. Roll them! Last chance to go to the bathroom. Thank <laughs> you. 